Hello and welcome to the QuickStat video for Deadworks Connect V2. In this QuickStat video, we'll go over the most common tasks that you're going to do with Deadworks Connect and how to achieve them. We're going to walk you through how to set up your environment, how to configure your Python console, how to configure PyCharm, and how to build a sample application that we prepared for you. DB Connect V2 is available with DBR version 13.0. Please make sure that your cluster version always matches your client version as well. In case of questions, please make sure to check out documentation to help you along. In the first section of this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps that you need. First of all, let's create a cluster. In this example, we're going to create a cluster using the personal compute policy. The personal compute policy is ideal to get started. It's a simple single node cluster. And in this case, we're going to select the Databrix Runtime 13. And we're going to rename the cluster to Databrix Connect Demo. After renaming the cluster, we simply click Create to get the cluster creation started. Once we kicked off the creation of the cluster, it is now time to create a personal access token. For that, click on your username, user settings, and then generate new token. We're going to create a very simple demo token that has a lifetime of exactly one day. Please make sure to copy your access token to a secure place. For the configuration of the database, Connect connection, we're going to need a couple of more parameters, like the workspace URL. In addition to the workspace URL, we need the cluster ID. You can extract the cluster ID like that from the cluster config page. The most convenient way to work with Databricks configurations and credentials is by creating a Databricks config file. The Databricks config file is in any file that allows you to refer to multiple profiles and their workspaces and tokens. In this case, we're going to create a default profile where the host points to the workspace URL that we copied previously and we create an entry for the token as well. Once the Databrix configuration is all set up, now it's time to create a new virtual environment. The virtual environments are used to isolate package installations and versions from each other. In this case, we're creating a new virtual environment using Python 3.10 and then we're going to activate this environment. Inside the Python virtual environment, we're going to install the Derex Connect version 13.0. This package installation will install all of the necessary dependencies automatically. In our demo example here, the next step is to install IPython because we want to use the IPython shell directly. After starting the IPython interpreter, we have to configure the Derex connection. To do that, we first import the Deadwork session as a Spark session, and then we're going to import the core config package from the Deadwork's Python SDK. This SDK allows us to use the profile file that we've previously created to refer to credentials and configurations. So first, we're going to instantiate a new config instance pointing to the profile that refers to our workspace and the token. In addition, we're going to pass the cluster ID from our previously created cluster. The next step is now to create a Spark session. We are using the Spark session builder and the particular option SDK config to point to the SDK configuration. Then we simply call in get or create as any other Spark session and instantiate the Spark session. Once we have the Spark session, we can execute all of the methods that we are known from Spark. For example, we're going to access one of the sample datasets that we have available in Databricks and show you the like 100 rows. Databricks Connect can not just be used from a command line, but as well from any IDE. In this particular example, I'm going to walk you through how to configure a new project in PyCharm. First, we're going to add an interpreter. We're going to choose an existing virtual environment. Here, we're going to simply refer to the virtual environment that we've created at the beginning of the video. So I'm simply going to type in the path of the virtual environment that I've created previously, and we can then directly refer to the Python interpreter inside this path. Once the project is created, we're going to continue similar as we did this before in the IPython example. First of all, we need to create the Spark session. To create the Spark session, we have to again import the Derek session and the SDK config object that allows us to refer to the configuration values. The next step is to create a new function that is going to read some data from Spark. 
For that, we're going to first create a config instance pointing to our profile and the cluster ID. Next, we're going to instantiate a Spark session. Once the first application is written, it's now time to figure out how we can interactively debug our application. We simply take the code that we've written previously and extend it slightly with additional lines. Now we're going to set a breakpoint that allows us to stop the program and interactively debug. Once the debugger holds at the given breakpoint, we can interactively introspect all of the objects that are currently available. In the last segment of this video, I'm going to walk you through how to take the Dataryx demo application based on Dash and directly edit it locally. Here, this is the URL of the GitHub repository of our demo application. We simply copy the GitHub code and are now going to create a new project in PyCharm based on this Git repository. This would directly allow us to create a new virtual environment based on the requirements.txt file that is part of the project and a based Python interpreter. Once you click OK, PyCharm will automatically install all of the necessary packages and make them available in your Python project. To start the application, all you need to do is edit the app.py file. Here, edit the config point into your profile and your cluster ID as before. Once you have finished the configuration, simply hit run and this will start the Dash application. Once the application is started, you can open it directly in your browser. Every time you're interacting with the control elements, this will trigger a query to Spark and fetch the respective data from the backend. Thank you for watching the Quick Start video.